Attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. I'm going to go through and flip through the chart book. Uh, mostly, mostly dollar pairs, uh, dollar pairs, and we'll look at some commodities. But before we get started, there, give yourself ten or fifteen seconds. Read through the risk disclaimer, and we will get started. All right, then. Uh, you guys should be able to see a chart here of the dollar index. If I could get some confirmation that the visual audio is all functioning properly, be greatly appreciated. Seems to be working on my end. Marino says, AVOK, Ron, good morning. All right, very good. Sorry about that to get a swig of coffee okay so dollar 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 right uh, so the dollar is is finally finally pulled off here a little bit um, had a little bit of a, a relief to this this massive move we've had up since uh, the Trump presidential victory uh, in the US uh, right now we've got some support. Uh, we've got some support coming in around the 148 line, right? So right now we're we're, we're backing and filling. Uh, we're backing and filling. Yeah, Pierre, I, I'm showing that everything looks okay. You may have to check something on your end. Um, so I. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, as we get back down here towards the support, you know, the first the first thought is is that we're we're probably going to get a bounce, right? I mean, that's you know, we had we had the other day uh, a couple of trading sessions ago, we had a we had a spike down, a bounce. Uh, you know, I I still think that maybe we'll we'll get a little bit more uh, of a bounce out of this, but if we look a little closer, uh, we do have the possibility. Right, the possibility of a head and shoulders pattern. Now, when you have a trend that's this strong, and then you get a, you, know, you get that big breakout to 13-year plus highs, um, you know, it, it does bring a little apprehension to the to the idea that this this will eventually roll over. Um, you know, we do have again, we have pretty good support at the old highs. So, with that said. Uh, with that said, you know we've we've got to wait for support to break, right? Uh, this could very well just become a triangle. Okay, that's that's one of the one of the things about these patterns. This is why you know this is something that I I think that probably every webinar I've held and every one that I will hold, uh, <laughs> I always mention that you know you got to wait for that neckline to break, right? And and really we need to get you know not only I mean the neckline's a little higher. Uh, than than that old high uh, because we did have that that low the other day that came in just above above the breakout point right just above that that 2015 high uh, and 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 with that said uh, with that said we we would we wouldn't just want to wait for the neckline to break we'd also want to you know get back below those old highs. Uh, in order for this to become a valid pattern because it could become a, a, a triangle and and that's one of these things that these patterns can do right so you got the head and shoulders but then you know it could always converge and then end up breaking out in, in, in a continuation fashion right so this could end up becoming a continuation trade uh, so it's something that you know we're obviously getting to a point here with the way that the price action has been narrowing itself down we are getting to a point uh, where you know where we we're gonna have a make or break moment right so maybe maybe that comes maybe that comes on Friday right we have we have NFPs I mean it seems at this point it's gonna be kind of a, a dud of a NFP uh, announcement 
I mean, barring anything that's just like extraordinary, more likely to the downside, right? Because it's already pretty much baked in the cake that we're going to that we're going to have a uh, that we're going to have a hike coming up here in just you know a couple of weeks, right? So, I mean, with almost like a hundred percent probability priced in, you know, it's going to take a lot to to really rattle the market and most likely anything that does have if, if it were to be a negative print then it would be something that would be short-lived because it's, it's highly unlikely that that one bad print is going to uh is going to derail uh the fed's intentions to raise rates so you know maybe we get maybe that's enough to to, to spur us out one way or another uh, I don't know. It's funny how sometimes these these news events, the ones that you think would be the ones that'll move the market, don't, and and then all of a sudden you just get you know you, you get something kind of out of left field, and 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 then and then it moves, you know. So uh, it's kind of like that little that last little grain of of sand that that, that goes on the pile, uh, and and then that's what it takes to 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 break it down. So you know, right now just getting to this though, we're, we're you know, it's, we're contracting. We're getting to a point where the dollar is going to make a move. Now, whether this is going to be head and shoulders or it's a continuation triangle, we still got to wait on this, right? But you know, we break down below 150, right? Then, then we're going to see we're going to see broad dollar weakness most likely. Okay, because we're also going to have failed. You know, those old highs and this pattern will kick in, and and we'll get a bit of a drop. You know, and that that drop would point to to maybe down towards 99, 99 half based on the height of this pattern. So that's something that, that I'm certainly keeping an eye on. And now looking at, get to the euro here now. So let's get to the euro. So obviously the euro, right, being the, the anti-dollar uh, is is got a, a, a similar situation. Uh, you know, it faces, it faces a lot of, right, so we, we, we bounced, we bounced from this, this December 3rd low. This was, you know, that, that ECB surprise that we bounced from there and we've been getting a little bit of a correction, but you know, it seems like that's all it's really going to be is a correction. Uh, now, whether that correction unfolds uh, a little bit further uh, it, 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 you know, you've just basically take the dollar index, flip it upside down, right? Euro's 50, what, 58% or something like that of the dollar index. So if you flip this upside down, uh, the dollar index, then you get the euro, right? So, but right now the euro is is trading at is trading at some pretty good resistance, which would be our neckline, you know, right around this 106.60 area. Uh, so it's going to really need to start to get up, maybe around 107, and and at that point maybe we'd see the dollar index kind of sink down below those, those old highs around 150. Uh, so. And in that case, we could see a continuation trade to the upside. I still think it would be corrective in nature. I don't, I don't foresee this being, you know, any kind of like inverse head and shoulders that would be the bottom. Uh, but nevertheless, it would cause us to have a bit of more of an up move. Uh, again, though, this could, this could just become a wedge, right? It could just become an ascending wedge, which, you know, an ascending wedge, you know, theoretically, is bullish, right? Because you've got the You've got the higher lows, and then you've got the flat top, and so it's indicating that buyers are stepping in at at increasingly you know, better levels. And we would be coming from again that that important low that was made back in December uh, 2015. So you know there there is some some reason to think that maybe this could break to the upside. But again, you know it, it could very well continue to break on through the downside. I mean, the euro has already broken some other important support levels. Doesn't mean it can't do it now. So we are getting to an interesting juncture here where, you know, we're going to have a make or break to the upside, downside. Uh, you know, yes, I just said it could go up, it could go down, but that depends on, on these levels. And we are starting to get some defined, you know, we are starting to get some defined levels here. You know, we've got, we've got this clear resistance. We've got this, this trend line coming up. Uh, I'd like to see some further convergence uh, before getting a breakout. The more it converges, the 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 bigger the move is more likely to be. Uh, but you know, right now we just kind of got to wait it out. Uh, you know, probably another day or two. I mean, we could we could make a move today. Uh, I didn't look at the data. We just had some inflation data uh, a few minutes ago, actually, out of the euro. Uh, but as we can see here, it, it really didn't mean anything. Uh, so, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking right now, this is resistance. So, you know, this is not an area that I'm interested in buying into, uh, certainly. But if it can clear it, then, you know, we can get to validation on this inverse head and shoulders. And if that's the case, then then maybe we can start popping up here towards 108 or so. Uh, and, and, and on the flip side, it, you know, if this, this forms out a little bit more and this ascending wedge doesn't turn out to be a bullish break, and we break this this trend line here. You know, we we could start to sink back lower again, and then at that point we'd have to start thinking about uh, those 104s, which was which was the low uh, created back here in the spring of 2015. So we're get we're getting a bounce right now from this this level down here in, in 2015 in December, and then we've got this March low. Uh, you know, which is something that, that we could see if we were to see a bearish break uh, of a wedged forming here. So that's right now how I'm looking at the euro. Uh, you know, there's there's a couple possibilities here, and we'll just have to kind of play to what the market tells us uh, in terms of whether it wants to break resistance or whether it wants to break support. But you know, getting involved right here at this moment to me uh, holds a risk from both sides. All right, looking at looking at cable. All right, so we got cable. All right, cable's just kind of meandering around. Uh, not you know, there's not a lot, not a lot to say about cable. Uh, we've you know, looking at the the shorter term chart, uh, we've got you know, we we were looking at last week. We were looking at a possible head and shoulder situation. Uh, never broke the neckline. You know, we're we're now forming. Uh, you know, we've now got some inflection points. We could even connect this one. Uh, We've got some some inflection points along this slope, all right. So this trend line is forming uh, similarly to how what we're seeing in the euro, uh, but then we've got some pretty good resistance over 125, uh, and, and and right now this this range is starting to, to to contract, you know. So I actually welcome further contraction because further contraction will lead to an expansion of volatility, right? That's just the way markets work. Uh, low vol, high vol, you know, back and forth round and round we go so right now we got good resistance above 125 you know I look for support then you know on a move down towards this trend line around 124 and should we coil up a little bit more and make a break in one direction or another uh, then perhaps we'll we'll get a little bit of momentum uh, starting to build there let's take a look let's go to dollar yen dollar yen this thing's been a beast all right, so last time we were talking about it, it was, it was, uh, it was facing this this big level here, going, uh, you know, in the 111s, and it didn't really have a whole heck of a lot of problem getting through it. Um, we got this circled here because we had a little bit of a bearish uh, doji uh, candlestick pulled back. This this was formerly resistance. Now we've got to respect it as support, right? So, you know, that's something that that. You know, we, as long as it could stay, you know, really, really above 111, uh, like 111.35, uh, then then dollar yen, you know, it's it's tough to be a short. Uh, looking at it, you know, if we get rid of this, uh, if we look at it, you know, on the four hour, you know, there's a possibility of getting getting a wedge. You know, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing a theme, which, you know, obviously these things are all you know, related and correlated, but the theme that we're seeing is that we're, you know, a contraction uh, in price action, which is which is good because because that that leads to expansion, and and so, you know, after having this massive run up where you know you really kind of had to be, you, know, you really had to buy those dips, right? You had to buy those dips, uh, you know, very aggressively uh, because they weren't they were very shallow. Uh, if if that's if that's what you're playing, but now now we're starting to get some type of uh, you know back and forth consolidation uh, type situation. Uh, we are sitting above we are sitting above this this level here, so you know it's difficult to be a short uh, looking at this until it would fall back. You know, I would say safely fall back below 111, then maybe we would gain some traction on the downside. But until then, dollar yen is is trending higher. It's got support. Uh, it's got a possible triangle here, which could act as a continuation pattern on the four-hour. So if we get a little bit more uh, fill in here, then you know we could see we could see another continuation higher. If you know, also we'll see the dollar and you know 
instead of instead of making good on that head and shoulders we were just talking about, it would actually uh, it would actually you know pop higher uh, it, it, instead and, and and make good on that wedge that we were just looking at. So we were just looking at that wedge and the dollar index possibly forming as versus head and shoulders, and maybe dollar yen you know wedge up and and also uh, and and pop higher. But you know this pattern also could could result to, you know, it's a triangle, it's a contraction and volatility. Uh, it, it could always break the bottom side trend line and, and break lower. So it's, you know, really right now we're kind of one of those positions in, in, in these things where, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of digestion going on. You know, there's some, there's some potential for a little bit of a top forming here in the dollar, but it's also, it could turn out to be a continuation pattern. So, you know, you're kind of in one of those situations where we if you really just kind of got to sit back and and watch and and see how you know it, it, which way it's, it wants to break uh, as opposed to predicting which way it's going to break so it, it can make for a little bit of tricky trading but uh you know the result can be you know if you sit on your hands and and be patient the the results can be uh you, know, you could potentially catch a nice breakout one way or another uh based on the support and resistance levels that we're we're looking at now Aussie's one you know, going back to the month, uh, the the weekly chart, you know, we had we had basically. Uh, let's get rid of some of this stuff. Didn't cross over from the other chart, anyways. Um, you know, we had the situation where we had these intersecting lines from like three years ago, right? And uh, it, it it seemed, you know, the first break, whether it was up or down, the first solid break you know, that was the one we were going to run with. And that's what I've been talking about is, you know, staying out of this chop. We got this break. Um, you know, this is one that I took a short position in. I got trailed out on on, on some. And, and, and I'm kind of just right now, you know, this correction's a little bit, if this is in fact a correction, it's a little bit bigger than than I had hoped for. Um, you know, I was, I was hoping to stay below this these lows over here, this like 74.50 area. Uh, but that that hasn't been the case. But what we do have going on here is we've got a channel, okay? We've got a channel developing, um, and right now, you know, if you're if you're bearish Aussie, you know, looking at this, you you really, you know, the one thing about these channels is that the the nice thing is is that you know if let's say you believe this is a correction, um, you could stay out of this correction which could eventually become a big rally, right? You can stay out of this by by not taking a position within it from the short side. So that's if you believe it's a correction, right? If you if you're liking it from the long side, then you know, you can use you can use these these lower uh you know, you can use the lower trend line as support, right? You can use it as support and you know, it gives you a line in the sand uh, you know, to, to buy on, and, and, and if it breaks below, you know, then, then you get the heck out, right? Uh, but what I'm thinking is that, let's say that, that, you know, the dollar wants to continue to move higher, uh, and this is just a correction, right, from this down move that we had from that big weekly break, that once we break below uh, this lower side trend line, should we, and we get below this most recent pivot, uh, which is at 74.30, 7432 if you want to be a if you want to be precise uh once we get below there then then i think that you know the momentum will then favor uh back towards the downside but until then again we're kind of just carrying higher in this channel uh we do have some resistance right now just beneath 75 uh this could also get wedged up and and, and make a break one way or another uh but really right now correction I believe uh, but there's no point in getting carried out on, on a stretcher short if it's just going to carry up in this channel so you know we'll just keep an eye on this channel and, and, and should it start to break back to the downside then you know I'll look for some momentum to to resume back towards towards the lower end uh, Kiwi Kiwi's actually at an interesting spot right now All right so Kiwi Kiwi had a big bounce just like Aussie no surprise there. Uh, Kiwi had a big bounce and it hit this trend line, right? Right now it's sitting at this trend line going back to January. Okay, so this is a this is a very pivotal point 
uh, for Kiwi. Uh, it, it's a spot that that you know we're going to watch to see if it can't turn off of. Uh, looking at the you know looking at the the four hour chart, right? We've got we've got a channel here developing. Uh, now one way to play this is so we've got this this resistance, right? So we've got this resistance that that's significant on the daily chart, and then we've got this channel forming on the four hour chart, we could even drop it down to the hour. Could look at it a little a little more granular. Uh, you know this channel here, again, you know, we're we're at resistance on that one trend line on the daily. We're at resistance, you know, looking at the you know at the at the top side of this parallel, right? Parallel to this this lower trend line. Uh, we do have some room to, to to drop here, but you know in terms of seeing a broad, more broadly sweeping move. Uh, we would, you know, we'd want to see it, it, it drop down uh, and then eventually break. So it'd be kind of like a, a rejection at this trend line and then a break of, of support that even got us to this trend line. Uh, but it, as long as it stays in this upper channel, then, you know, the, the, the broader, uh, you know, move is not going to take place to the downside, obviously, if it doesn't break this, if it doesn't break this, uh, this lower trend line. So right now we've got pretty good resistance right here. So I'm 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 looking for I'm looking for uh, Kiwi to turn lower, uh, pretty much you know any time now, uh, in in the, in the next you know the next 24 hours. So if if it's going to do its thing in reverse, uh, you know what would be nice is to see a full reversal today, which is always possible. See a full reversal bar, uh, put us back down on this this lower this lower trend line, and then break. Right, and then and then that could be a resumption of this initial thrust lower. So initial thrust lower, correction, test resistance, then turn back lower. But again, I'm just going to use this this rising uh, this rising trend line here uh, as my guide for determining whether we're going to get you know another move back down below 70 and maybe even worse, uh, you know, getting maybe even down then to this trend line that goes all the way back to uh, August of last year, but Right now, you know, we've got some we've got some technical structures to work with here. Uh, you know, we just gotta gotta be patient. I mean, if you're you know if you're really looking itching to get short kiwi, you know, this is a spot uh, where it it you know this is a spot from a risk reward standpoint that I feel uh, is is somewhat favorable. Uh, and, and if you're just a short term trader, you know, just looking to take some some quick hits. Uh, and you're looking at this thing from the short side, then you know this is this is not a bad spot right here. And and then looking, you know, you'd, you'd be looking then for an initial target. Uh, initial target would be this lower trend line. So that's looking at Kiwi structure is kind of kind of clean. It's just you know, it's just depending on how you want to play this. Uh, whether you you know you're playing for the broader move in that case, you want to wait. Uh, wait for this break. Uh, if you're just looking to, to catch a quick hit, you know maybe it's something then that you're interested in shorting off this topside trend line, along with this 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 trend line over here. So we have some uh, we have some good resistance there. Dollar Cad. I'm gonna spend about five seconds on this thing. I really don't like Dollar Cad. I just thought we should take a quick look at it. Uh, Dollar Cad, you know, sitting on top of you know this this these parallels helped guide it you know kept have kept it in check we broke above it you know we're we're kind of using it as support uh it doesn't know what it wants to do it doesn't know if it wants to trade with with the dollar or wants to trade with oil it's really kind of you know stuck uh it, you know i could see if we get a little bit more a uh, little bit more dollar weakness uh, you know, I could see it dropping down here, maybe to this lower parallel, which also matches up with the trend line uh, going back to September. Uh, so there is some good confluence down here around 133.35. Uh, it is below. Uh, it is. It is. It is heading lower, but generally speaking, dollar cad's a mess. I mean, I, I don't really, you know, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say about that. You know, if somebody can tell me how to trade that. Uh, then, by all means, <laughs> speak up. I, uh, I, it's just not something that I, I, I can generally do. Um, looking at a couple of cross rates. So, looking at it, you know, this is one that we've been following. Um, you know, we've been following for a while. 
uh, it has hasn't given the best looks. This wasn't a terrible reversal uh, here off of a pretty big zone. Uh, we do have you know a lower high situation. We have a descending wedge forming, so this could become a potentially attractive opportunity. All right, this could become potentially you know something that that we'll we'll look at later down the road. You know, we've got this massive descending wedge. It broke. It broke this this key 144 area, forming a descending wedge. Uh, but with that said, uh, you know, it's going to need some more time. It's got really good support down here. You know, we can see here just by all these bottoms, it's got really good support. So this is not something that you know if if you're if you're looking to be short of it, uh, this is not a great spot right here. Uh, the better spot would be you know to wait for it to to rally and turn back lower, similarly uh, to how it did right here, right. So this this reversal reversal day, you know at least showed that momentum was turning back lower. So you know we get a bounce back up towards 144 again you know, we get another lower high, then I think that maybe, uh, and it starts to turn back off, then I think that maybe Euro Aussie could have like another, at least another, you know, another couple hundred points uh, in it for a trade to the downside. But, you know, more broadly speaking, right, looking at this descending wedge, it still needs time uh, before it forms out. And, you know, as you can see here, my cursor is all the way out, even getting towards this apex is towards the end of the year, Christmas time. Maybe it'll be a maybe it'll be a Christmas gift that we'll we'll get uh, for those who celebrate Christmas. Uh, it, it'll it'll be you know something end of the year. Uh, it'll be you know something that we could we could take maybe after the New Year even. Uh, I don't know if it'll you know necessarily wedge all the way down in there. I mean that that would be you know that'd be a whole month of of chopping around. But I do like the idea that if it gets back up here, starts to roll over. We could get a couple hundred points, a uh, couple hundred points back to the downside, at least towards the support. But right now, you know, if anything, if anything, I'd be looking at this thing from the long side. Uh, for those of you who are maybe trading on the hourly chart, uh, you know, this is something that that you'd want to look at. You know, we've got right now, we've got some higher lows and higher highs uh, starting to form here, right? So we've got a first move up, down, another move down. You know, so this may be something that that if you're looking to, to take some scalps, you know, you've got you've got good sponsorship down here in the you know low low 142s down into the mid 141s. Taking a look at Aussie yen, Aussie yen. I'm only going to look at this one because uh, of a potential pattern setup. You know, this one's had a had a pretty good move. Uh, you know, broke a really really key trend line that goes all the way back to uh, you know a couple of years. And right now the trend is up. The only the only reason I'm taking a look at this is because of this, All right? So we do have, you know, we have this pullback, but then we have this this ascending wedge uh, that's taking shape. And so this ascending wedge, you know, if we were to get out, say, you know, more towards here, uh, could offer an opportunity either on a breakout with the trend, or we could get an ascending wedge where you know, you've got higher lows, higher highs, right? And then it breaks to the downside. And what I like about those is that is that you do have the higher highs and higher low situation going on. So basically, when it starts to break against that, you know, you've you've caught you've caught a lot of individuals off guard, right? Because because they're buying at higher and higher levels. And when it starts to go work against them, you know, you've got basically you know all those who have been buying because because it's moving their way. Uh, you know, you can you can catch a really really sharp move. So, Aussie yen to me is 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 appealing from the standpoint that you know, you're getting like yeah, like we are in those dollar pairs, right? We're getting that contraction of volatility, but you know we're also we're also getting it in a, in, a, in a clean fashion where you know these trend lines these trend lines connect up really nicely. So we could have a really nice uh, we could have a really nice apex here and then either a squirt higher. Or break lower. We'll just have to go with the break. Uh, my hesitancy with the break higher is that I, you know, in my experience, you know, the one thing you've got to be careful with uh, while it's with the trend is that what you will get sometimes, uh, and these can turn out to be fantastic, fantastic uh, turning point trades, is that is that you'll get a break higher, 
and then it'll quickly reverse. Okay, you know that that, that happens. You know quite often actually in, in wedge type situations, triangles, is that you'll get a fake out. And those fake outs, you know, if we were to break higher and then break this lower trend line, they can become really, really powerful to the downside simply because now you've got, you know, you've got all this, you know, this buying going on here, right? This creating these higher highs and higher lows. But then when the when the move that is expected, quote unquote, uh, doesn't materialize and starts to fail, then you've really caught a lot of longs off guard, which gives you, you know, some fuel for the downside. And that's certainly not a prediction of what's going to happen here. It's a scenario, you know, to keep on the on the burners, uh, on the back burners, you know, in, in case that it does happen. So this is something that uh, you know should break relatively soon. I mean, you know, I'm even looking here. This this apex, you know, you're looking at like tomorrow. Uh, at the latest that that it should make some kind of move and of course it could be sloppy it could end up just kind of chopping sideways but you know patterns you know we gotta you know we work with what they give us and and then uh, you know we execute our trades and if if it does become a sloppy mess then you know look to exit but if we start to get a break one way or the other and 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 things start to to move our way then you know that's that'd be great uh, but yeah you know this is one you know it's good to have uh, it's good to have a scenario out there uh, take a look at gold now. Let's get to the commodity complex. All right, so gold. Gold made that big surprising down move. Didn't even didn't even hesitate at 1,200. And we've been talking about here the the 1,200 level uh, down to you know even 1,190, uh, which was a, a, an important pivot from last year. Okay, so this this pivot was the first higher high in a long term downtrend. Right, so that made 1190 important. Uh, we retested it here. Then you know we made a higher, you know, a little bit of a higher support level here, 1200. 1200 is obviously a psychological level, uh, and we pierced right through it. And right now we're sitting right below it. So this is this is pretty good, uh, pretty good resistance, right? I mean, it's kind of hard to argue that sitting below uh, both support levels, prior support levels, is is not good resistance. Um, you know this this the correlation as we can see down here right with a dollar I mean this is about as extreme as you can possibly get minus 97 percent which is effectively a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio I don't expect it to maintain like that forever uh, as we can see correlations move in and out of love uh, quite frequently uh, but this is, you know, obviously it's a it's a dollar dollar gold, you know, moving in a complete opposite directions, almost, you know, to to the tick. So with that in mind, you know, looking at what we saw uh, earlier in the dollar index, and that possible, you know, head and shoulders, or is it a wedge? You know, we'll have to kind of see if which way it wants to break out of that. Um, you know, right now gold's kind of telling you that that it wants to go lower because it's broken through support and now it's having a hard time uh, regaining it so it's acting as resistance uh, you know so if the dollar obviously if it, if it continues higher and it holds that 150 level if it makes that it you know it, 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 it invalidates that that possible head and shoulders that we were talking about earlier then you know we're gonna look for gold to continue to move lower uh, gold is uh, also like like the dollar and like dollar pairs is going through a congestion period that is that is narrowing okay and given that it's narrowing uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna make a move hopefully soon it's gonna be a clean move all right it's not always clean just like I was talking about with Aussie yen uh, we'll get a we'll get a clean move out of this out of a, a more developed pattern here uh, so with that in mind you know, if if you're also here's another thing. If you're if you're trading, if you're trading a lot of dollar, you got a lot of dollar exposure, and then you're also you know you've got some precious metal exposure. So like let's say you're long dollars and, and short precious metals. I mean, you know, generally speaking, you're you know you have on basically you know more of the same position, but right now that really holds true. Okay, um, because you know you get with that 97 percent inverse correlation I mean they're they're virtually doing the opposite to a T and so you've got to keep that in mind uh, if if you've got exposure to, to both those markets you know it's it's one of those things uh, and if you've got them on both on 
both sides of the market. So like, let's say you're long the dollar and you're long gold or you're, you know, short dollars and you're short gold, you know, then, then you have, you know, you have a hedge effectively and, and then you want to manage risk around those positions uh, accordingly. And hopefully then, you know, you would, you know, you'd make more on, on one of them and the other one would get stopped out because that would, that would almost be certainly the case, right? When you have such a high correlation, uh, if, if the dollar makes a big move up and you're, and you're long dollars and, and you're, you know, you're long gold, then, then it's likely your gold position would get stopped out and then your dollar position would work. And, you know, that would be, you know, one of those things. And I, and I find myself in this position at times and I'm, and I'm knowing that one's going to, to not work, but that doesn't mean it's not going to work. Right. But like one of them's not going to work. But the, the thing is, is where are your stops and where are your targets for each one? And if they're properly placed, you know, you should make more on your, you know, on your winner and then, and then your loser will, will just naturally get cut out and, and, you know, your, your winner will just carry on. So when you have those positions on like that, you know, that's, it's not always a, a bad thing to be on the same side in both those markets. Uh, you know, I, I actually, I, I kind of feel good when I, when I like it, you know, th in this case right now, I don't, you know, I don't have like, I don't have a, a bullish dollar, bullish gold, bearish dollar, bearish gold stance. But I like it when I do, when I'm not really sure uh, which one of those will work. But I like them both because then, and if they have a good inverse correlation, then I know that, that that one of those will likely get stopped out and the other one will run. So it happens from time to time, and I and I really do like it. Uh, looking at silver, so silver um, to me is 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 attractive uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is right now. Okay. Well, one is that it's actually kind of doing the same thing as as a dollar, and and well, it looks like the euro uh, a lot. But uh, we had a bearish reversal last week, okay, which led to which led to the down move. So within this downtrend, you know, silver tried to rally. It was unable to to sustain that rally. Had a small gain. Then the next day got hit. Now, excuse me. Now, what we got going on here again is that we got a bounce. We got another bearish reversal, right, on Monday. So far, we haven't immediately we haven't immediately rolled over, okay. Uh, but I'm still giving the benefit of the doubt that that this this could work to the downside, okay. That that this bearish reversal will eventually end up sending us down to the next support level, which is around 1580 to 16. And you know you can see here we've got some good uh, good levels there, uh, so we're still in this air pocket that sits between the low 17s and around 1580 to 16. Now we look at the we look at the hourly chart, right? You can look at the four hour too if you like. Uh, and this is this is from yesterday's uh, post that I put on the site. Uh, you know the possibility that we could have an inverse head and shoulders. Again, it's a possibility. Uh, at the time when I was writing it, we were actually sitting down here. We hadn't even we hadn't even formed a pivot. Okay, so looking at silver, you know, it's possible this is an inverse head and shoulders, just like we were looking at with the dollar. Okay, just like we were just looking at with the euro. Right, so the euro, you know, possible inverse head and shoulders looks a lot like silver, doesn't it? And it should. It should as 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 much as these two are uh, correlated right now. Uh, they should, but it could also be a wedge, right? And it would be a wedge within an ongoing downtrend. So I'm going to, you know, continue to, to, you know, view this with a neutral stance right now, but should it break above this neckline, then, then I would become a little more optimistic on, on the prospect of silver moving higher. Uh, if it were break below this, this lower, uh, trend line, and then also get below what would, be now an invalidation of a right shoulder, right? Get down here below around 1637-ish. Uh, then, you know, we'd have a continuation trade and then I would look for, uh, you know, a validation of this, this daily reversal uh, with the trend. And then I would look towards the 1580 to 16 mark uh, as being our, our target, uh, which has been all along uh, since breaking below you know, 17, uh, since breaking down below 17, 
it's been our target, right? Take a look at oil. Just give me one second. Let's take a look at oil here. Cedric. Why did the pound just crash down? It was a pretty good move. 60 points. Uh, I'm not sure here. I'd have to take a look at the uh, look at the tape. I don't have that screen up at this moment. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I'm just I just see someone posting. I don't see exactly any. Uh, I don't have a headline up. I just see the the. There's been some notes that it did just make a sharp move lower. Um, Gibran, financial stability report, BOE. I like to think that it just fell because of resistance. Thanks for the heads up, guys. Trying to operate multiple screens here. Wasn't looking for the, wasn't looking for that. Uh, anyways, uh, we've got, we've got here basically you know it's funny you know I'm, I'm glad this just like kind of happened right here right now because one thing I don't do as a technical trader um, I look at big you know I look at big events coming up you know for example NFP you know the the, the, the meetings uh, you know the the central bank meetings but generally you know the, the whole premise is, is that you know you, you kind of as a technical trader you you avoid the noise uh, by you know by using your levels and then you know if you're if you're a believer in technical analysis which I believe many of you are because that's why you're here uh, uh, then you know you use levels and and a lot of times the news uh, you know won't take much to to validate those levels uh, and if and in the long run if you're right about a trend then the news will generally come out in favor of that trend now I'm not saying anything about this particular uh, this particular drop here in, in cable, but you know we had resistance here, and you know it wouldn't take much to it would take more to push it through, right? It would take more to push it through than it would to push it lower. Uh, it's kind of how I look at it, uh, and and a lot of times it's it's like the market is waiting for an excuse. That's that's you know it's like it's 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 sitting at support, it's sitting at resistance, it's it's consolidating. You know especially you'll see that with these. You know these patterns, like we were talking about with the dollar index earlier. Uh, you know this is 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 coiling up. It, it's like getting to a point where like it's looking for an excuse, a catalyst, if you will, uh, to to break out to the upside or break out to the downside. And it just depends on you know which way that catalyst comes. So the market like converges, you know, and as it converges, it's basically conversion is just an in, is indecision and, and you know, market participants squaring up their positions. And then once a catalyst comes out, let's say NFP, for example, on Friday, you know, then breaks it out to the upside, let's say, or breaks it down to the downside. Again, I'm not saying NFP is going to do that because, again, NFP, I think this NFP is going to be one that's, you know, is, is going to be kind of, you know, if it's not a great number, as long as it's not like negative or anything, you know, it's it'll it'll you know there'll be a reaction, of course, but you know I don't think it'll be something that that the market gets like overly carried away with because basically it's baked in the cake that we're going to have a rate hike here come December. Uh, Fed fund futures are basically at like a hundred percent that that we're going to have that hike. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, just generally speaking, you know, trading off levels and trading with the trend uh, and trading with patterns and whatnot, you know, you'll find a lot of times that that news will come out and it'll be in your favor, you know, and sometimes I'll even ask, oh, what was the news? You know, or like, you know, I stepped away from my screen or like, in the, you know, an instant like this where I'm not looking at, you know, I'm not looking at the tape real closely. Uh, you know, all you know, something will come out and be like, "Oh, what happened?" You know, and you know, either I got stopped out or maybe it, you know it moved in my favor. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, as a technical trader, I really don't, <laughs> I really don't care too much about uh, uh, what's going on uh, unless it's something really big. Now, speaking of something really big, we have the OPEC situation going on right now, and as we can see here, oil is having a massive update, right? So we're looking at oil. 
uh, is having, you know, we had this downtrend, uh, this trend line was broken, we retested it, we put in, you know, basically, you know, you, you, there's a lot of different names for it. It's kind of like, well, it, it didn't close and open at the exact same price, but uh, rickshaw, rickshaw man comes to, uh, comes to mind. Uh, but it's like, a, it, you know, it's basically a long-legged doji. Uh, and we got a reversal off of this trend line. Now, things are getting sloppy. These bars are getting really big. Obviously, there's been a lot of speculation. Uh, and, and, and there's been a lot of squaring up in both directions, uh, you know, on, on what's going on, uh, with the OPEC situation. I'll be glad when he, when it's over with and, and we're completely out, you know, away from that because, you know, we can return to, and I use quotes, uh, a more normalized environment, but we do have some good resistance up here around 49, uh, again, this trend line. So if we get back up here and we start to turn back lower, um, you know, it's something that, that I'll be interested in, in looking at from the short side. Um, but generally, you know, this was, this was kind of a, a tasty situation. Um, but right now, you know, you get these really long day-to-day -day bars. I mean, we've, we've flip-flopped signs now for, for a fourth day and the moves are big. So staying out of the oil market to me right now, uh, is not the worst thing because there's really not a, not a, you know, there's not a great setup and there's not a, a situation here uh, that to me, you know, the, the risk reward calls for uh, taking a stance one way or another. All right, is there any uh, questions right now about, you know, the dollar, uh, commodities? Uh, I'll do a quick run through on some, some indices. Uh, if anyone chooses to, I wanted to kind of keep it concentrated to the dollar and commodities. Uh, but if anybody's got any questions about, you know, something maybe I didn't I didn't cover one of the cross rates, for example, uh, let me know. I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll go through it. Otherwise, you know, I'll just take a quick look. You know, indices have been tough, right? Indices have been tough. Uh, you know, starting with you know the biggest one of them all. Uh, you've got you got the S and P's. You know, kind of drifting lower here uh, after after hitting kind of an intersection here uh, of, of a couple different lines of resistance. As you can see here, I drawn in, uh, looking for some support here. It's kind of a tough market, end of the year. Uh, there may not be a lot of reason to sell. Gibran asked, do you think there'll be a reversal on, on pound dollar? You mean like in the next like hour? Uh, I mean, I've got support. You know, I've got support over here, right? So I've got support down here on 24, which is this trend line rising up, right? Got like a good month-long trend line. So I've got some support there. Um, you know, I, I could see I could see it's just kind of bobbling around a little bit more, maybe till NFPs. You know, NFPs are, are only a couple days away. So, you know, if it, if it went into a little bit more of a choppy sideways, situation here I actually war I would like that because then there'd be a, a more of a convergence and you kind of like think of convergence as, as kind of like a powder keg waiting you know to light off right so volatility is declining 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 and then you get some type of catalyst whatever it may be sometimes it's just more buyers and sellers more sellers than buyers uh, to answer your question Jabron I'm looking at this 124 area as support I don't necessarily know if it's going to bounce off of it. Right now, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt as support, right? Because because until it's broken, right? Until it's broken and until you start making a lower low, uh, you know, below these lows over here, right? Around 123.85, um, you know, it, 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 it's got support. So, you know, if, if it bounces off, that would be a spot. Like if I was, if I was scalping this thing, that would be a spot that I would look for it to bounce off of. Now, right here at this moment, I mean, could it reverse? Sure, but like, there's really nothing. You know, I mean, I suppose you got a little bit of, I suppose you got a little bit of support like right here. You know that we came down to, but to me, you know, this is still kind of like hanging out in an area where you know it could still move a little bit lower before it bounces. Uh, so, looking at it from a scalping standpoint, I I would be cautious here from the long side and I, I would be more interested if it came down to this trend line and then started to reverse uh, because you know right now that's been the name of this game is reversing 
you know, and, and, and we just saw in the last 24 hours, right, we've just seen a couple of reversals off this resistance zone up here. Okay, we've we've got several peaks, uh, and you know it really it has not been able to stay above 125. So I right now the way the market's trading, after it dips, you know it, it gets to a point where it's it's been finding buyers, and we've got an established trend line. So that's what I'm uh, kind of hanging out waiting for. Sure thing. All right. Well, that is. Uh, that is pretty much it for today. Um, there's here. I'm going to give you guys the link. Uh, this I'm going to go over NFPs on Friday, uh, and hopefully we'll see where you know some of the, if some of these things can, can materialize. You know, we can get we we've got some consolidation here, right? We've got we've got some some you know potential you know uh, situation running in the dollar where you know it's. Things are coiling up. We could have a little head and shoulders. We could have a continuation wedge. Uh, it's hard to say just yet. I, I would say that you know the failure rate for that for it being a top is 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 pretty high just because of how strong the trend has been and and given that we're still above those 2015 highs. Uh, there's a link right there. I just posted into the general chat. Um, that's a link for Friday's webinar. I'm gonna go over. Uh, I'm gonna go over trading the NFP. Um, how I trade it's the only it's the only uh, data release that I that I day trade FX like when I say day trade meaning like it could be in it for like 30 minutes you know like really really short term um, and, I, and I'll kind of go over how I do that and what I look for uh, and then we'll also take a look at the the situation that's brewing you know with with a lot of these charts and how they're you know, kind of coming to a to a head here, where they're going to need to make a break, and uh, maybe by then we'll have made a break, or perhaps we'll be talking about how these things are getting even more primed to make a big move following NFP. Sure thing, guys. I appreciate your questions and I appreciate your time. And if you if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Paul Robinson FX. If you want to email me you can email me at p robinson at dailyfx.com uh but otherwise you know i'll see you guys on friday and uh hopefully we'll have uh hopefully we'll get some side some sort of outsized number one way or another and uh and get a little volatility to trade uh but until then everybody take care and uh talk to you on friday